Yep, Bob Arum rips Eddie Hearn and says that Andy Ruiz got Hearn by the balls. He got him by the balls. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang, gang notification gang, please hit the bell icon. ESPN Plus, sign up. Top rank main events. They have a fight this weekend. Sergey Kovalev versus Anthony Yard. That's a good fight coming on from Russia. I'm really excited for that. Light heavyweight title on the line. Very much a step up for Anthony Yard. Can't wait. He's already arrived in Russia. And I can't wait to see the outcome. It's going to be changing of the guard or, you know, Kovalev proving to the world that he's the vet and the experience makes the world a difference. Again, I am an affiliate with ESPN Plus. The link is in the description. If you use that link, it does help the channel, you know, helps further the cause. And I appreciate it. Bob Arum did a recent interview with Valenify, and the link is in the description. He has some strong words for Eddie Hearn regarding Ruiz Joshua Part 2. It's kind of a rematch that was announced, but... It was halfway announced. They did a, a fighterless press conference, which I have never seen, you know, since I've been watching boxing, where it was Eddie Hearn and, and one of the organizers from Saudi Arabia who were calling for the fight and saying it's happening in Saudi Arabia. But we haven't really heard Ruiz's side come out and say, yes, we signed the contract. It's a done deal. We're going to Saudi. So it looks like they're trying to find a way out of that location. I don't doubt that Ruiz is down to fight Joshua he knows he's contracted to fight him I just don't think he likes the money and the location and the terms so regarding this Bob Aram did an interview link in the description and this is what Aram had to say I think Eddie Hearn showed how stupid he is by making the the announcement that the fight was in Saudi Arabia before he had signed Andy Ruiz to a contract <laughs> He says, now Ruiz has him by the balls. Ruiz, he's in a, a great position because Hearn went out on a limb and announced the fight in the venue in Saudi Arabia. Ruiz, one country in the world he doesn't have to go to if he doesn't want to is Saudi Arabia because his own government said, you're not safe there. So I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but I want to weigh in on Bob Arum of Top Ranks, his, his comments on Eddie Hearn, right? Listen, new media, we just keep getting it right, people. I know it hurts, but Arum is saying precisely what I've been telling you guys. The same stuff. This is a bad look, no matter how you slice it. Listen, I don't know what the outcome. There has to be some type of middle ground or compromise or litigation, whatever they're doing. I don't know how it will end, but I do agree with Aram. I have been saying this before Aram, and, you know, it's just a person in the industry who's been in the industry a lot longer than I've been alive. You get what I'm saying? Aram's been in the game, and I'm not saying he's perfect, but I agree with him here. Because he does have Eddie Hearns by the balls. Again, this is a bad look because to me, I'm going to keep saying this. Ruiz has less pressure than Anthony Joshua from my view, my standpoint. Ruiz is living his best life right now. He got a whole new life just by beating Joshua. He's getting a level of praise and money and, you know, buying new things. And he's in another tax bracket. All because he did what he did given the the face of adversity and being given this opportunity right he doesn't really lose here even if he loses the fight i i really don't see i mean he, he's gonna get a couple it sounds like they're working on the money but he, he got back-to-back million dollar paychecks that he wouldn't have got unless he got a fight that was big like this and you know in a rematch scenario that woke the game up and woke you know shook up the world so he's financially he's winning for sure whatever it ends up as because fighting the likes of Dimitrinko and shit like that, 
it's it's pretty safe to say he wouldn't have been getting these type of paydays for those types of fights. So he's winning that regard. Plus, he won the first fight and he did it and shook up the world. That's already in history. He became the first ever Mexican, Mexican-American heavyweight champion of the world. So he's already set history. He got an SB award. This is obviously a, a phenomenal year for him. So I think there's far less pressure on Andy Ruiz than Anthony Joshua. Joshua, he's the one that's 6'6", who looks the part, looks like a bodybuilder, and is the guy with the gold medal, the guy that beat Joseph Parker, unlike Ruiz, who lost to Joseph Parker. He was the one that's supposed to get it done. He was the favorite. He was the one that told the world that he had been training for 16 weeks for this fight. He was the one who had advance notice of a fight and had proper time to prepare. He, 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 he was the A side of this promotion. He was the you know, the headliner, all that. It was under his his team's imprint, match room, rematch room boxing, right? And I think the longer this goes on, this back and forth, the worse it gets for mostly Joshua, to be honest. Because if Andy Ruiz gets stripped of a belt, that's going to create another problem. If he gets stripped for failure to comply and fight a mandatory within a certain guideline or deadline, that's going to hurt Joshua because everything he lost to Ruiz, now he won't be able to get it back just by beating Ruiz. That's a bad look. The other thing is, to me, what Bob Aram is saying is very valid. Eddie Hearn jumped the gun. He announced this fight and said, oh, yeah, we're fighting December 7th. And so far, we have not heard confirmation from Andy Ruiz. So who has bought tickets? Have tickets went on sale? You know, it's so it was just premature to even announce that. That's like that's like a woman and her boyfriend announcing she's pregnant and she took a a pregnancy test from the Dollar General 98 cent store. So without really checking to make sure if it's reliable, maybe scheduling a doctor's appointment, you gathered all your family and friends and flew your parents out and announced you were pregnant and then come to find out you took a faulty test that gave you a false positive false read you know that's the equivalent you know that that would just be a waste of time yeah you can still eat the crackers and the, the salami and drink some wine but you gathered everyone out thinking that you had this huge surprise announcement and you really don't have nothing to share and that's what it is with joshua and and eddie hearn they announced a fight and they can't even proceed with anything else until they get this this cleared up you know, get Andy Ruiz on board and get him to actually promote the fight and, you know, suggest that he's going to fight. They have flyers made and backdrops, but it doesn't even show DAZN's logo. So what are they going to do? Are they going to just get a piece of, you know, a DAZN sticker and then stick it all over the backdrop? Or are they going to reprint all those flyers? You know, it's just a waste of money. What if the date changes or something crazy? You know, what if it leaves Saudi Arabia? You wasted all this money Print, man, this is going to be funny. You're going to have to go to Kinko's and reprint all the signage with a new date or a new location. That That's a horrible, horrible way to go. And it's a, a waste of resources. So you're better off um, waiting and, and making sure you, you, you knew if Andy Ruiz and Team Heyman or whatever, Team Ruiz was on board and you still pulled the trigger. So I think, I think this backfired. I think Eddie Hearn did this as a tactic saying hey we you know we couldn't we couldn't actually agree on the terms so we're going to just push forward because we have this contract from the first fight and we have his signature so that's all we need we're just going to move forward with this whether he likes it or not and then if he doesn't then we'll we'll pursue legal action and they try to do it as um kind of like a scare tactic to scare team ruiz into oh shit you know, we got to we got to go through with it. He's already announcing it and stuff like that. So we're not going to be able to get any more money or we're not going to be able to move the location. We, they already have a signed contract. But I don't know if it's different in the UK, but people get out of there's running backs and NFL players and all types of shit that get out of contracts all the time. You get what I'm saying? And what Bob Aram is saying is is totally true. There are U.S. travel advisories and bewares and cautions when traveling abroad to Saudi Arabia, right? They have drone attacks and missile attacks. It's a different land out there. They have different um, cultural customs. So one would have to be advised. What if Andy Ruiz's wife, you know, wants to wear 
a skirt or something like that. That might not be accepted. You have to follow the customs and the law of the land. So truth be told with, with the travel advisories and, you know, just that it's such a, um, a different place and not the same democracy that we have in America, Ruiz might legally be able to get out of it. So to me, Bob Arum is, is true. And this is what I've been saying. Ruiz got him by the balls. He got him by the balls, y'all. <laughs> he got him by the balls because you did all this stuff. And if you have to put it this way, I'll say it like this. If anything changes, Ruiz won. Location. If some, if some, When the fight is announced, if it is not in Saudi Arabia, Ruiz's team won. If Ruiz found a way to get more money than he was signed up for, Ruiz won. His team did what they had to do and because they got him more money, which is what he wanted. If the fight gets canceled altogether and Ruiz fights somebody else, then Ruiz won. So to me, the pressure is, is on Team Joshua because if, if they... They they have they created this fight and said it's December 7th in Saudi Arabia and they're building a venue with this capacity. So from this point, this is their their the pedestal that they're on. If anything changes from here on out, then that means Andy Ruiz's plan was successful. Now, how successful will it be? We don't know. But if if he gets more money, if he gets it out of Saudi Arabia and then they have to fight in the U.S., you know, these different types of things, then I think Andy Ruiz's team served him well and did the right thing, a.k.a. what Bob Arum is saying, what I've been saying, he got him by the balls. Because if you had all of the legal um, indoctrinations and all the legal paperwork to make it stick, then why wouldn't you make it stick? Why would you budge? You know, if, if you can, if you could hold somebody to something and it'll settle and stick in court and it's not messing up you it's not messing up your timing then you wouldn't have to budge you do you wouldn't have to compromise you know you're in the right that's it end of story you know it's like an insurance claim why would i why would i want to pay on an insurance claim if if somebody wrecked and then we could prove that it's um they're 100 percent at fault for the accident you know i'm not gonna make no kind of settlements or accommodations for them this is their fault so we'll see how it plays out. But I agree with Aram. And this, like I said, this whole situation is becoming very farcical. It really is. It's becoming very farcical to even see this. You know, the fight getting announced, a fighterless press conference. Dillian White's, he, you know, he's not involved in this particular fight, but it's still bad on rematch room. He, his B samples never open, never came back. So they got a lot of stuff lingering on and going on in the background. And it's to me, it's a bad look. Let me know what you guys think. How do you think it'll play out? Do you agree with Bob Aram here? Drop your thoughts in the comment section. If you're new, consider subscribing. Make sure you smash the like button. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego, signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego the future of boxing.